we are moving right along, and right after this speaker, we'll have a brief intermission. But when she isn't on a yoga mat, you can find her being president of the Oklahoma Association of Charitable Gift Planners or sitting on the board of Sunbeam Family Services. Here to talk to us about an opportunity to rise to the occasion, the importance of feedback in the workplace, help me welcome Alex Towler Bliss. Yeah. Is this on? Yes, it is. I'm going to put my notes over here, y'all. Okay. My name is Alex, and I'm really good at hard conversations. I'm here to tell you why they matter and how to create a culture to support them at your work. So often, we feel like we are being nice by not telling our direct reports or our colleagues what's going wrong. We think that by swooping in and fixing it or not talking to them about it, we're protecting their feelings. And in reality, we're failing to give them an opportunity to rise to the occasion and actually fix the problem. Folks can't fix problems they don't know about. And not telling them sets them up for failure. That's not nice or kind. In addition to providing folks with a deserved opportunity, the data shows that clear, kind, and honest feedback is a trust builder, while lack of transparency is a trust breaker. In times that are hard, a lack of information is a breeding ground for resentment and lack of trust. Change and disruption disproportionately impact teams that don't talk. In my experience in working with leaders, there are two ways to respond to a problem. You either spend your energy trying to convince folks that the problem doesn't exist and you end up up there, or you put the problem on the table and you solve it in alignment with your team and you end up here. Teams trust leaders that champion their own discomfort and put problems on the table because they know they can rely on those leaders to walk with them through reality, no matter how difficult that reality may be. And when teams trust leaders, they're more likely to engage in the creative problem solving and innovation that we need to support the long-term growth of our businesses. So we talked about why feedback matters, opportunity to rise to the occasion, and it builds communication among your team. Let's talk about creating the culture to support it. First, connection is material to a successful feedback conversation. When there is no connection, you'll find the person receiving the feedback questioning the intentions of the feedback provider. So you're gonna hear narratives like, he's only saying that to me because he doesn't like me, right? You can also see how this would expose a business to employment law litigation over discrimination and harassment, which is not ideal. So if connection is material to a successful feedback conversation, then how do we build that connection? Start by building trust. One-on-ones are a set-aside time to discuss personal and professional wins and growth opportunities. It shows your team that you're committed to each individual's professional development. Second, show up in the happy and the sad times because the weddings are almost as important as the funerals. It's, it, you don't have to say the right thing. It's enough to say this shit sucks. What's not enough is failing to say anything at all. Don't let perfection be the enemy of the good. Remind yourself and your team that your next obligation is to do the most right thing with the information in front of you. Celebrate the learnings as hard as you celebrate the wins. And as you release perfectionism, watch personal accountability grow among your team. Folks aren't afraid to say, I need help, or I messed this up, when they're not afraid of a perfectionist reaction in return. Boundaries are material to building trust. A lack of boundaries breeds resentment, and resentment breeds distrust. So boundaries might sound like, I leave at 5.30, or where there's emotional dysregulation, I take a five-minute break. Know your boundaries and hold them. And embrace egoless leadership. When people come to you with a problem, don't respond with, that wasn't my intention, or I didn't do that. Say thank you, because they trusted you enough to tell you. Follow up and check in. This is especially true when you have an opportunity to make someone who is diverse from you feel included. When they come to you and they say, that language doesn't support my community, don't respond with, I'm not a racist, I'm not a homophobe. Say thank you, follow up and check in. And lastly, model the behavior you wanna see, because sometimes all we need is a blueprint. So model the boundary setting, curiosity, and love of failure for those you love, and watch them slowly do the same. So to recap, 
Feedback matters because it gives people a deserved opportunity to rise to the occasion and it builds communication among your team. Connection is material to having a successful feedback conversation, so build trust. Set aside the time and your ego. Show up without perfectionism and with your boundaries. And stay curious longer when there's an opportunity for you to rise to the occasion. Oh my God. Woo! That was amazing. <laughs>